Hey everyone and welcome back to the Trading Bot in Python series. In the last episode we actually built our optimizer and in this episode we're going to implement it and evaluate the backtest that it produces. Now if you haven't seen the previous episodes there'll be a link up here in the card and there'll be a link to the playlist in the description below. So with that let's get straight into the code. So just to remind you we had a class, an optimizer class and this is the same class that we had in PyCharm. So we've gone over how it works and the different parameters that we set. And now let's have a look at how we integrate it with our trading bot. So let's go to the main function of our portfolio construction model, this generate optimal portfolios. So here we take in our alpha data frame and we grab the alpha score column from it. And so you can see first we add our holdings that are no longer in our universe. And then we pass it into this optimized function, which before was blank. So let's have a quick look at what it does. So you can see here, it gets the invested securities that we currently have. And if there are no invested securities, then we know it's gonna be an initial portfolio purchase. So we set our initial rebalance flag here to true, and we set our turnover to one. So that means that we can buy as many stocks as we want to fulfill our portfolio. And we then create an empty initial weight data frame. If it's not our first time, then we turn off our initial rebalance flag here. We set our turnover to equal what we define up here. So you can see here in this portfolio construction class, the parameters are turnover max weight and whether it long short. So here we make sure that our turnover does equal the turnover that we uh, specified. And we create our initial portfolio from the securities that we have invested. And then we add in all of the securities that we have in our new universe and their alpha scores. And you can see that's what we're doing here. Okay, so I will cover this part in a bit, but let's just hop straight into the optimizer thing that we saw before. And you can see this is very similar to what we had in the example we did in the last episode. So we have our initial portfolio, which is a data frame with the symbols as the index, and then our initial weight and our alpha score for each stock as the two columns. We then have our turnover, which we'll just consider that to be the turnover at the moment. I'll get into this part in a bit. And then our max weight, which is again what we defined up at the top here. And it is also what we defined in our main script when we created the portfolio construction class. Okay, so we simply run a dot optimize on there, which is this function down here. It optimizes our portfolio for us and we get the optimization status and the optimal portfolio. Okay, now you can see here we've got a bit more logic. So if we check whether the optimization status is optimal or not, and if it's not optimal, then we run a log saying that the optimization with the turnover with the turnover value here was not feasible. And then we pass it the optimization status. Now we can get to what I've done with a loop here. So I sort of decided to make turnover a bit of a soft constraint. And so all we're doing here is we're looping from our turnover value. The reason I've times it by 100 is to keep it as inter integer values, and that's what you need for range. So we get our beginning turnover value, and then we end at 100, but you set the value here as 101, and that would be a full portfolio rebalance. So we go for i in our range and then we make our turnover, we divide it by 100 to get the true turnover value and we pass that in. So basically what this means is that if the optimization status is not optimal, so let's say we gave it a turnover of 2%, if it couldn't satisfy the constraints with 2% turnover, we increase it by 1% until we can. So we try at 3% turnover, we run an optimization. If it still can't fulfill the constraints, we keep going. And you can see here, our upper limit is one. So that'll be a full portfolio rebalance. However, if it does find the optimal portfolio, then it just breaks from this loop and returns the optimal portfolio. So there you go. You can see that we've implemented our optimizer and we've managed to make turnover a bit of a soft constraint here. Cool, so that's the portfolio construction changes that we have made. Now let's have a quick look at some of the other changes I've made. So in the execution model, I've introduced what I call a liquidity tolerance level. So what this liquidity tolerance level basically is, it liquidates securities that have a very small weight in our portfolio. So you can see here, our liquidate securities are securities that are less than this liquidate tolerance level. Before we were just saying where it was equal to zero, now we're giving it a bit more range. So you can see here, I've set our liquidity tolerance to 0.005. So we, we won't have any stocks that have a smaller weighting than that in our portfolio. Some of the other changes that I've made is I've made some charting changes. 
So in the position concentration chart, along with our la largest long position and our largest short position, we now have our smallest positions, which I've done there, which was very simple, very similar to before. And I've added two more charts. So I've added a stock count chart. So it counts how many stocks we have long and how many stocks we have short. You can see that that is all calculated in this function here. I've added another chart, which is our exposure or our leverage. And so this is what I explained in the previous episode with our net exposure and our gross exposure. So you can see that's all calculated down here. Now, as always, I'll link the code to all of this in the description below if you want to check that out in more detail. So those are the main changes that we have made. And now we can get into looking at the backtest. OK, so here we have the backtest that I ran previously. And you can see that we've got a much better sharp ratio score here. We've got 4.929%. So again, that's the probability that the sharp ratio is greater than one. I think before we had something like 0 0.2 or something, something minuscule. So that's a lot better. And we can see that the return that we've made is a lot higher. We've now got 395% return, which isn't too bad compared to our previous trading bot. Now, as you can see, that still quite a bit of the return comes from the latter phase. But you can see that there is a lot less risk in this. Remember how before we had some massive drops in some places, we now lo no longer have that. And we can also see now this blue line, our total fees is a lot smaller than it was before. So that's great. We've managed to reduce our fees by quite a bit. And we've also managed to reduce our volume by quite a bit as well. And also remember that throughout the whole period, we're actually trading with more equity and thus will be being charged higher fees and higher trading volumes. So the fact that we've reduced it with greater equity is a very good sign. Now, just to quickly go over the parameters that I choose to use. Now you can load the code that you used for a certain backtest using this code tab at the bottom here. Okay, cool. So we can look in our main.py. We can see that we used a turnover of 0.05 and a maximum weight of 0.05 and then a liquidity tolerance of 0.005. And just a, another thing that I'd like to point out in the universe selection, I bumped up the amount of stocks to be 100 stocks. So this allowed for some fluctuations in the stock counts. Now let's have a look into our custom graphs. You can see for the most of it, we're staying at a maximum weight of 0.05, which is what we wanted. You see at some points it is starting to breach that on the long side here and then on the short side here, but we're never going higher than 0.15. So that's still quite a good sign. I think you can see at the bottom here, we've got our smallest positions. They're all hovering at about 0.01. So we don't have any positions smaller than 1% in our portfolio, which is quite good, as we don't want to have to be trading those at very small amounts due to the fixed cost in fees. Now let's have a look at our exposure and our leverage. So you can see our net exposure for most of the time is pretty much dead on zero few fluctuations but other than that that looks perfectly fine and the same with our gross leverage here you can see that we're only very slightly going over our buying power and then if we look at the stock count we can see that we're hovering pretty much at around 20 each side few changes we have a few more stocks long side here but that isn't really too much to worry about cool so we can see here that the optimizer is working exactly how we hoped it to it's reducing fees and it's increasing our diversification and not allowing too much position concentration. And you can see that it's performed a lot better than our previous trading bot back tested. So where are we gonna head from here? So in the next episode, we're gonna look at researching a new factor or new factors. And then we're gonna implement that to increase our factor diversification and hopefully get some better risk adjusted returns. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications if you want to be notified when the next episode comes out. Also, if you've got any comments, suggestions or questions, you can leave a comment down below. You can drop me a message on LinkedIn or you can tweet me on Twitter. And as always, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.